So accuracy is important. There are sort of three things that you have to be aware of, and it's like ARV. Accuracy is one of them, reliability is the other, and validity is the last one. So accuracy can be improved in many ways, but it's from what we've done, it seems pretty good, right? We have made sure to weigh lots of things, to not have to try and transfer substances from one place to another, and that helps. But some ways that we could improve it is to ensure that all the materials quantitatively transferred from the sample tube to the filter paper and evaporating basin. So make sure that, that the sample tube is really, really clean when we start weighing things. So the other one is that we have to make sure that we wash the sand really, really well. The sand, like I said, can hold some salt. We want to make sure we get rid of all of that. So a lazy wash will give you bad results. But if you're very, very thorough with the washing, you'll get generally really good results. For the salt, when we heated the salt water to try and get rid of all the water, like I said, don't let it splatter. Just, you know, heat it gently and make sure that you're trying to vigorously flash boil it or something. You're just trying to you know, gently get all the water out and have the sand um, just in the bowl. Another one is, to dry, is the drying of the samples. So remember how I said, you know, the mass will go down slowly as time goes on but it will eventually stop changing. That's because there's no more water. So we have to ensure that we dry the mass to a constant weight. Sometimes if you aren't looking at it for long enough, it could seem like it's just not changing. Like it, look, it might just be you know, kind of fluctuating, but really there might be the trend downwards. But if we looked at it for a longer period of time, it, we would actually see that trend downwards. We're just too close to see that it's actually trending downwards. We just have to be aware of that. You know, always play it on the safe side. Leave it for a couple more hours if really necessary, if you're really suspicious about it, but just be aware of that. Things don't just happen instantaneously all the time, so you just have to be aware that filter paper is completely dry. And you have to be also kind of careful because you could use better materials. Uh, for instance, a filtering crucible might be better because filter paper is, well, paper, and we know paper can absorb some water because it's a bit hydroscopic, it's made of mostly cellulose. So all those OH radical, oh, all those OH functional groups on the sides can hold some water. So maybe a crucible is better, simply because it's made of ceramics, and ceramics don't absorb water. Well, most of them don't. So that could be one way to improve the accuracy. So that's one simple gravimetric analysis experiment, and hopefully you can understand how gravimetric analysis works and why it's important. It's pretty obvious why it's important because scientists weigh lots of things and we always want to know compositions of things. It, does, it doesn't matter what it is. If we look at the mining industry, we want to know how much of a particular you know, useful metal is in a rock or if we're looking at, say, the sort of like a steel making facility, we want to know how much steel uh, we need to make or how much carbon we need to measure to make the steel. There are lots of industries that rely on measuring things and those are just two, two of them. This is why this gravimetric stuff is really, really important. So hopefully you've understood how to approach a gravimetric analysis experiment, uh, even a simple one like this. That will be important for your future understanding of more complex experiments that require lots of measurements. Now again, about making the experiment better. Being able to sit, look at an experiment and say, well, we could do this better. Describe one procedure which can improve the, the accuracy of, the gra of gravimetric analysis experiments. Okay, so this particular one, how can we make it better? So we can improve the accuracy by ensuring the mixture has been dehydrated until constant mass has been achieved. So again, constant mass, that's a really important one. We want to make sure all the water is gone. So that is one way to really improve the accuracy of this experiment. You could do sort of like a staged heating process. So we could heat it once, then weigh it, then heat it again, and then weigh it and make sure that they're the same. That is to ensure that there's absolutely no water left in it. For instance, a single heating step may not be sufficient to remove all the water. Now you might think, oh, you know, how does that work? Well, if you've got like a block of sand and you heat it, it might be the case that the outer sand insulates the inner part. And so while the outside might be quite hot, the inside might be still very cool. So for instance, if you look at a desert, there are lots of creatures that live under the sand, like under the surface, and there's lots of moisture there. You'd think a desert is very dry, sand gets belted with sun all the time, yet creatures can, can survive you know, a couple of meters under the sand, I guess. 
you just have to make sure that by heating it several times, we are making sure that all of that energy gets into the sand and into the water. We omit any additional error from the water. Okay, so we could just heat it a couple of times and that would help. Okay.